Welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. This is part two of my look into Cheap Ryzen, where I investigate if it's worth shelling out for a low-end AM4 system build if you're looking to put together something for minimum cost. Let's quickly recap part one and then introduce the contenders for this final video in the series. In part one, I took a look at the Ryzen 5 1600, at the time the cheapest processor available on AM4, beating out the dual-core Athlons and matching the four-core 4-thread 2200G APU for US eBay Buy It Now pricing. I built a sub-$250 system around the A320 motherboard I use in my PCI Express test bench system and ran a number of newer games on it. Overall, it performed pretty well, with two exceptions, Starfield and VR Chat. As an alternative, I recommended the often similarly priced Ryzen 3 3100 as your starter CPU instead, and showed what kind of GPU scaling you could expect in Cyberpunk and Starfield had you built using the Zen 2-based 4-core 8-thread budget wonder instead. Well, today I stand by my recommendation, as prices have leveled out, with 1600 coming in at $40 now, while the 3100 has dropped in price and is available for the exact same money. This, I feel, is a no-brainer for the quad-core Zen 2 chip as a budget option. A number of folks in the comments mentioned overclocking, which is an excellent point. If you base your cheap Ryzen build around an overclocking-capable B450 motherboard instead of the slightly cheaper A320 or A520 boards, both the Ryzen 5 1600 and Ryzen 3 3100 are quite capable overclockers. This is thanks mostly to both processors being primarily artificially limited in order to fill in the absolute rock-bottom lowest tiers in AMD's product stacks at the time they were released, so they inherently gain an atypically large amount of overclocking headroom on AM4, which is a platform that's not generally known for having a ton of overclocking headroom. Today, I want to move up a price tier. We're just about doubling the price of our CPUs from about $60 with a cooler to about $100 with a cooler. And this is true whether you're buying used or new, thanks to those bonkers used CPU prices I mentioned in the previous video. To be fair, this is still firmly within the realm of a low-end AM4 build price-wise. It's just that these CPUs represent much more typical non-controversial starting points for the AM4 platform in 2023 than the bargain hunter options in the previous video. The first of the two CPUs we'll be looking at today is the Ryzen 5 5500, a 6-core 12-thread APU that's had its integrated graphics disabled. This is a Zen 3-based chip with a cut-down 16 megabytes of level 3 cache versus its full chiplet-based cousins. Clock speeds are reasonable, however, at 4.2 GHz boost with a 65-watt TDP. The second CPU we're looking at today was supposed to be the Ryzen 5 3600 Non-X, but a listing error meant that I received the higher clocked X variant instead. Both CPUs are 95 watt TDP single chiplet Zen 2 variants with 6 cores and 12 threads. The non-X clocks to 4.2 GHz while the X clocks to 4.4. Both have the full 32 MB of level 3 cache specified by AMD's Zen 2 Matisse architecture, with that cache being split across the 6 cores in a 3 plus 3 configuration. Once again, the motherboard I'll be using for testing is the ASUS Prime A320MK, and I'll be using the $20 Vetru tower cooler that showed in the previous video. Better $20 coolers are available today, but this 3 heat pipe wonder still managed to keep both CPUs comfortably cool during testing. I've got the same 16GB of DDR4-3200 as the previous video, but I've upgraded the GPU from a G4-1660 Super to the Radeon RX 5600 XT to match the CPU's bump in price and performance. This change, plus our CPU prices, brings our total platform cost uh, – CPU, GPU, motherboard, and RAM – up from $235 to just under $300 before factoring in case and power supply. If you're curious, I'm once again using a basic Thermaltake Smart 500 watt power supply and one of my 3D printed test benches for this build. With all that out of the way, let's see how these two budget hexacores perform in the test suite. Starting off with DOS PC emulation and DOSBox, both CPUs dominate running Quake at 640x480, with the 3600X producing 82.8 FPS and the 5500 scoring a neat 99 FPS. In City Skylines, the 3600X is only ahead by a single frame on average, with the frame time graph says everything you need to know about playing this game.
Moving over to VRChat, Doom in the 3600X squeaks by with another victory, able to maintain slightly higher frame rates while firing the chain gun than the L3 cash strapped 5500 can manage, though both are pretty similar performers when just roaming the hallways. Overall, a good showing for both CPUs here, though the edge goes to the 3600X. Turning the VRChat pane up a notch, we have After Dark Plaza, and it's here that the 5500 shows its Zen 3 prowess, turning in 41 FPS average versus 39 from the 3600X. Rainy Cyberpunk City is an even 30 FPS on both CPUs, and the Blender Classroom Benchmark World is a similar story. So things are looking pretty evenly matched at this point as we move into the final four tests, Cyberpunk and Starfield, and GPU scaling on both those games. Perhaps a winner will emerge? I guess we'll find out. Cyberpunk was an epic fight at 1080p high preset with the 5500 turning in 70.9 FPS in the benchmark, and the 3600X turning in 71.6. The things don't get any more clear out on the streets of Night City, though, with the 3600X providing consistently one or two more average FPS, but the 5500 providing a consistently smoother frame time graph. Let's increase the GPU horsepower and see if any differences emerge. Turns out, they do. Neither card is able to max out the 6650 XT at 1080p high preset, but the 5500 is consistently 10-20 to 20 FPS ahead of the 3600X now. In my Starfield standardized benchmark here in New Atlantis, the 3600X is just about 3 FPS ahead of the 5500, though if we turn up the GPU power with the 6650 XT, that lead tempers to just 1 FPS. Combat out in the world is a different story, though, with the 3600X consistently ahead by a handful of frames, although both provide imminently playable experiences both with the 5600 XT and the 6650 XT. I'll go ahead and let this footage play out, and you can make up your own mind. So with those performance numbers in mind, and the relatively similar costs of these two processors, which one would I buy to build a low-end AM4 system? Well, honestly, and you probably expected this answer from me at this point, I wouldn't buy either of them. There are two reasons I personally wouldn't build around either of these processors. The first reason is the Ryzen 5 4500, another APU with its graphics removed, a la the 5500, but using Zen 2 cores instead of Zen 3. This CPU is about 90% of the performance of the Ryzen 5 3600 for under $80 in a box with a cooler and a warranty. If you're building a budget machine that's still going to be extremely capable in modern games, that one's the ticket. The second reason I wouldn't build around the 3600 or the 5500 is the APU that the Ryzen 5 5500 is based on, the 5600G. If you're patient, these will frequently dip down close to the asking price of the 5500, such as here, where the 5600G is only $15 more than the 5500. I'm a firm believer when it comes to using APUs when you're building a PC from scratch, especially if you're building one of one piece at a time as you can afford each part, since as soon as you get this APU operational, you can start using the PC. Sure, gaming on it is going to be a 720p affair for the most part, but you can also just, like, use it boot it, start customizing it, watching videos on it, surf, chat, use it for work even, I know, what a concept. 
Using an APU for a new PC build gains you time, and that's a resource I don't hear talked about enough in the PC building space. If you use an APU, you can start using the machine weeks, months, maybe even a year ahead of time, depending on how constrained your budget is and how bad the GPU market is at the time. And maybe all you actually find yourself doing with the machine is playing esports games and watching videos. So congratulations, you've saved yourself two or three hundred dollars on the cost of a dedicated GPU. So that's my actual recommendation, a 4500 for cheap or a 5600G if you're looking for a little more performance. Or you'd like a machine you can use right now without a graphics card. Anything more expensive than that and you're looking at a mid-range Ryzen build, not a cheap Ryzen build. That's not to say there aren't some great options out there like the 5600 non-X, but that's for a different video. And that's my series looking at cheap Ryzen. Many apologies that this wasn't more timely, and of course prices are changing all the time, but hopefully this proves useful information for you. As always, may the PC parts be ever in your favor. Have a great night.